We are in section four of chapter four, and I'm at the very bottom of the page. I want to talk you through some things, and you're going to watch a video by the author. So I'm going to kind of dance around what the author is going to say and tie some of it together. Starting down here where it says counting rules. I cannot stress enough that you don't keep going through the sections until you fully think on, mull over, wrap your brain around each of these concepts. So many times a person must know a number of, of all possible outcomes. And I want to point out this is not probability, it's how many outcomes for a sequence of events. And to, to, to determine this number, three rules can be used. If you're using flashcards or using a uh, just a glossary page, whatever you're using, I would go ahead and jot down fundamental counting rule, the permutation rule, and the combination rule. That is this section. It's a pretty full section. And these rules are going to be explained, and then they're going to be used in depth in Chapter 4, Section 5 for the probability of events. The first one's called the fundamental, fundamental counting rule. You're going to watch the author's video on that, but I want to point out on your formula card. You will be able to use this formula card on the test that has Chapter 4 in it. But I want to point out down at the bottom the things that we just mentioned down here where it says fundamental permutation combination. Looking here, we have the fundamental counting rule, permutation rule, permutation rule. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to figure out, learn, really hone in on what's the difference, and then the combination rule. So keep this in mind as an outline for what we're looking at. <coughs> Excuse me. At the top of 235, you see the fundamental counting rule. I would highlight it, note it, don't make this thing messy. You want to be able to read it and use it. But the author is going to do a video on the fundamental counting rule. Also, I'm going to ask you to do this example, but I want to point out there will be multiple ways to do some of these, and that's the part you've got to mull over in your brain. What's going on in the problem, and then what tool can I go pick off the formula page or from your mind that you can use? There is a long way, and I'm all for it, where you could figure out here the, you can, uh, um, the flipping of the heads and tails and then getting something on the die. And that's what it's asking. A coin is tossed and a die is rolled. And so you can look at this and you notice, wow, that's, you can count up the outcomes. Um, you can do a tree diagram, and it's also going to get the same amount of outcomes. But you notice in the middle, I have what's down as the lazy way, and that's the fundamental counting rule. You have two possibilities on the coin, six on the die, two times six is twelve. So there are 12 possibilities. It's our sample space. I also ask you to look at the problem at the bottom of the page, but I'm going to keep going because you'll do that with the video from the author. Down at the bottom of page 236, I want to point out here, when determining the number of different possibilities of a sequence of events, you must know. You must know whether repetitions are permissible. The example at the top of the next page, 237, is talking about license plates. What we are doing in chapter 4, is, it is confusing. <laughs> it has the potential to be very frustrating. And how I get it to make sense is to think through what is it talking about. I draw spaces for what it's talking about. I put in talk out loud to myself what is going on. And this is a license plate, and it's talking about four spaces, and it's got to be numbers. And when you count up your numbers, zero is a number, so you get one through nine and zero. So there are ten numbers that could go here, ten numbers that could go here, and they can repeat. You could have one, 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 and that would be permissible. So I'm asking you to work through that one on your own, but I gave you the gist of it right there. I also want to get you to grab your calculator. We're going to be doing a lot with factorials. And on factorials, it's just the exclamation mark. And as you see here, 5 factorial, you start at 5, and you multiply everything to it all the way down to 1. And so multiplying out 5 times 4 times 3 times 1 is, is 120. But I'd like you to go ahead and find the button on your calculator. And I need to find it on this calculator. I may need to pause and then go find it on this one. 
I think I'll go ahead and do that. Let me pause. Well, I found it. I found the factorial on this uh, calculator. See where it says PRB? That stands for probability. Wow. And if I punch PRB, you're going to see some things that we're about to see in this chapter. But there's my exclamation mark. And if I scroll over, I get the exclamation mark. So what I would have to do on this calculator is I would have to punch in 5, then hit PRB for probability, go over twice, hit enter to say it, that's what I want, but hit enter again, and there's my 120. You're going to have to learn how to do part of these by hand because your calculators are not going to be powerful enough to handle the large numbers. But by reducing by hand, it's going to make this very doable. I wanted to show you how to punch in the number on on your calculator. Oh, I even got a note. Let's do zero factorial. Zero factorial, I would pause or just throw out a guess what you think it's going to be. There's my zero. I got to go to probability. Go over a couple of spaces, hit enter, now hit enter again, and voila, it's one. A couple of other things I wanted to mention. He's going to mention permutations in the um, video, and when he mentions them, you need to pull out your formula card and notice where they are, and, and that there's going to be a difference between these. It says it's going to be an arrangement in a specific order. I'm going to ask you to do a couple of the examples and look through those. And then it's going to get you here to the permutation rule itself, which is the first one. And notice it says it is the number of objects taken R, um, R objects taken at a time. Taking R objects at a time. But over on the next page, you see permutation 2. And then permutation 2 is going to mention something else. We'll get there in just a second. But he's going to work you through this first one. I even have a comment that you might want to do 4-4-3 using what he's talking about and then coming here and redoing it using what he's talking about with the permutations. That brings us to permutation rule 2. You might even note on here permutation rule 1 and permutation rule 2. And what's different about them is the second one, there are going to be some objects that are identical. And if they are, we have to take that into consideration. So that's what we're going to do looking at permutation rule 2. I like using an example to explain what's going on because this can be a little scary it looks very similar to the one on the other page, at least the n factorial in the top does, and then all of this r stuff starts going on, and it says all of these r's add up to the n. Okay, what is going on? And so looking at this example 4-46, how many permutations of the letters can be made from the word statistics? So that was really nice that it said we're going to use a permutation. Sometimes I've got to figure that out myself. But in this one, it says we're going to use a permutation. So are they taken one at a time, or do we have some that are identical? When you look at this word statistics, it has identical pieces in it. It has several T's, several I's, a couple of or three S's. And with that being said, it already lays it out that there are three S's, three T's, two I's, an A, and a C. And what we are supposed to do is statistics 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Its N is 10. It has 10 letters because it's asking about the letters. And so that's our N, and we will put it in the numerator as 10 factorial. The denominator has to take into account everything that is identical. So the identical piece will be all of the S's, all of the T's, all of the I's, etc. So like here with three S's, you see there's a three factorial. That's going to take care of getting the S's correct to find out the number of permutations. Three T's, there's the three. Two I's, there's the two. Then the one and the one. I like how they go ahead and write all of this out. And we could remove a whole lot of stuff. And I'd like to go ahead and do that. We can remove top to bottom anything that can reduce. These ones are just going to end up being times whatever's there, and they're not going to change the answer. Same thing with this one. Students don't like the reducing sometimes, and I'm not sure how you learned it before, 
But if there's something in the denominator like this 3, and, and even this 3 over here, they are allowed to reduce each other. And this is the part I was meaning. I wouldn't try to put all of this in my calculator because it can't always handle it. But if I go ahead and do some reducing, then it's going to be easier on me putting it in the calculator and it's all going to work out nicely. So even this 2 and this 4, they could reduce, or the 2 and the 8. Why don't we get the 2 goes into 2 once and 2 goes into 8 four times. Let's grab it there. Um, let's see what else. I've got a couple of more 2s and a 3. Well, why don't I use this 3 to go into 3 once and 3 goes into 9 three times. Um, here's a 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 three times. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 4 two times. Now when I multiply the 10 times the 3 times the 4 times the 7 times the 3 times the 5 times the 2 times the 2, I'll come up with this 50,400 permutations that can be made from the word statistics. So take your time, start and stop this video as many times as you need to be able to get some great notes and then go do the examples that I'm referring to. And remember, I'm always available, uh, pretty much always available by email, and I definitely reply quickly by email.